You've probably heard this rumor, vaccines cause SIDS or sudden infant death syndrome. It's a scary thought and as a mom and a pediatrician, I totally get how unsettling that sounds. But is it actually true? Today we're busting this myth wide open with facts, not fear. Let's clear up where this idea came from, what the science says, and what really helps reduce the risk of SIDS. Before we jump into the vaccine discussion, let's take a quick moment to talk about SIDS or SIDS. It stands for Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, which as the name suggests, is when a baby unexpectedly dies, usually while they're sleeping. It's called a diagnosis of exclusion, which basically means doctors can't find any other reason for the baby's death. It's incredibly heartbreaking and it leaves parents and doctors with a lot of questions. Now let's clear something up right away. There are a few things we know can increase the risk of SIDS. For example, if babies sleep on soft bedding or in unsafe conditions like co-sleeping in a bed, that can make things riskier. And babies who sleep on their stomachs or sides before they can roll over on their own are also at a higher risk. Other factors like exposure to secondhand smoke or being born prematurely can also play a role. But here's the important thing to remember. Vaccines, not a factor. In fact, vaccines are not on that list of things that increase the risk of SIDS. They're actually designed to help keep babies safe from serious illnesses, which is a big reason why they're so important. So where did this myth come from in the first place? Well, it mostly boils down to timing. SIDS tends to happen most often between two and four months of age, right around the time babies get their first big round of vaccines. So naturally, some parents made the connection and thought, well, my baby got the shots and then something happened. Maybe the vaccine caused it. But here's the thing, just because two things happen around the same time doesn't mean one caused the other. That's what we call correlation, not causation. Let me give you an example to help clear it up. That's like saying every time you put your baby in a cute new outfit, it rains. Coincidence? Yes, but the outfit didn't cause the rain to appear. Unfortunately, some anti-vaccine groups have taken heartbreaking stories and turned them into fear-based narratives. They'll find cases where a baby passed away from SIDS and say, see, the vaccine caused it. But that's not how vaccines work. In science in general, we need to look at the bigger picture, the data, the research, and the patterns, not just individual stories. The real truth lies in the facts, not the fear. And one of the big arguments you hear from anti-vaccine groups is, but SIDS is reported in VAERS. And that's true, VAERS stands for the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System. And it does include reports of deaths, including SIDS. But here's what most people don't realize. VAERS is a self-reporting system. It's open to everyone, parents, doctors, even someone who isn't a medical professional. Anyone can submit a report of something that happened after a vaccine, even if the vaccine had nothing to do with it. So for example, if a baby gets vaccinated and tragically later passes away from something completely unrelated, like suffocation or a heart condition, VAERS might still record that death but that doesn't mean the vaccine caused it. VAERS is a tool for tracking events and identifying patterns that need more investigation. It doesn't confirm causality. And this is where misinformation can take root. People see reports of SIDS in VAERS and jump to the conclusion that there's a cause and effect relationship. But here's where the science comes in. Large, well-conducted studies have shown there's no connection between vaccines and SIDS. Take a 2007 study published in the Vaccine Journal, for example. Researchers looked at babies who got a combination vaccine that protects against six different diseases. They compared these babies to those who didn't get vaccinated and found no increase in SIDS cases. In fact, they discovered that babies who passed away from SIDS were actually vaccinated less often and at later ages than those who didn't, further supporting the fact that vaccines do not cause SIDS. And here is where honesty and transparency matter. We want people to report real concerns. That's how science works. We investigate, we analyze trends, we improve safety. But when people abuse the system, like anti-vaxxers, by flooding it with claims based on timing, misinformation, or personal beliefs rather than facts, it makes it harder to detect real issues. Take the case of baby Evie Klobes, whose tragic death was seized upon by anti-vaccine influencers. They claimed vaccines killed her based on the fact that she had been recently vaccinated, but her autopsy showed she died from unsafe sleep positioning. She was found wedged between a mattress and a wall. Still, anti-vaccine pages pushed her story as a vaccine death, using her name in misinformation campaigns. This not only hurts public trust, it hurts grieving families. 
And remember, if this kind of clarity is what you're looking for, be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all the important topics that affect your child's health, including future vaccine videos. You may have seen this online. 79.4% of babies who died of SIDS were vaccinated that same day. That sounds terrifying until you understand what that number actually means and actually read the study. Here's the deal. Most babies receive their first vaccines between two and four months of age. And that's also the peak time when SIDS tragically occurs, regardless of vaccination. So yes, there's overlap in timing, but that does not mean vaccines caused it. If vaccines truly cause SIDS, we'd expect to see SIDS spike again when babies get booster shots at older ages, but we don't. Why not? Because the risk of SIDS naturally declines after six months. That's due to biological development and safer sleep practices, not because vaccines suddenly become safe. They were always safe to begin with. Now here's something most viral posts leave out. That statistic comes from a 2015 study that reviewed 16 years of VAERS data. And what did the researchers find? No patterns linking vaccines to SIDS. None. SIDS was the most reported cause of death in babies under six months, but it is also the most common cause of death in that age group overall, vaccinated or not. So what vaccines are anti-vaccine activists blaming? Let's break that down. First up, DTaP. That's the vaccine for diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis, also known as whooping cough. They claim the pertussis component causes SIDS, but there is zero credible evidence for this. In fact, whooping cough itself is dangerous. It can cause life-threatening apnea in infants. Next, hepatitis B. It's given at birth and again around two months. Some claim it increases the risk of early infant death, but this vaccine has been used worldwide for decades, and SIDS rates have not increased as a result. Then there's the pneumococcal vaccine. Critics say it overstimulates the immune system and that can lead to SIDS, but the diseases it protects against, like pneumonia and meningitis, can cause serious illness or death in babies. This vaccine helps prevent complications that could leave babies more vulnerable. Rotavirus is another target. Some say it causes gut inflammation linked to SIDS, but in reality, this vaccine protects against severe diarrhea caused by the rotavirus, which used to be a major cause of infant hospitalization worldwide. And finally, they go after combination vaccines like Penticel or Pediarix. The argument is that they overwhelm a baby's immune system. But here's what that ignores. Your baby's immune system is a powerhouse. It handles thousands of exposures every single day, from licking toys to crawling on the floor, germs from you. Vaccines are a drop in the bucket compared to the germs they're already dealing with, and the science backs it up. Combination vaccines are safer. The benefit outweighs any risk, and they do not increase the risk of SIDS. You've probably heard this one, but SIDS is listed in vaccine inserts as a side effect. And yes, that's true. But here's where it gets a little tricky. Vaccine inserts are legal documents, not medical explanations. They list anything and everything that's reported during clinical trials, patient observation, even if it wasn't caused by the vaccines. It's like a list of everything that happens, whether it's related or not. It's not saying this will cause that. It's just recording what has happened around the same time. Think of it like this. Let's say you're reading a review for a new coffee shop. One person mentions that they got a headache after their latte. Does that mean the coffee caused the headache? Maybe, maybe not. It could be a coincidence, like they were stressed or didn't sleep well the night before. Just because it's mentioned doesn't mean it's the cause. The same goes for SIDS, listed in the vaccine inserts. Here's the important part. SIDS naturally happens around the same time that babies get their early vaccinations, around two to four months. So some SIDS cases will just coincidentally happen shortly after vaccination. Regulatory agencies require vaccine manufacturers to report all events, whether a baby was vaccinated or not, even if the rates are the same for both groups. So just because you see SIDS listed in the insert doesn't mean the vaccine caused it. It's just reporting what happened, not confirming a cause. Let's dive into the research. And if you haven't subscribed yet, now's a great time to join the community where we're all about bringing you the latest information and busting myths. A 2015 meta-analysis published in BMC Pediatrics reviewed multiple studies and found no increased risk of SIDS from vaccines. In fact, this meta-analysis looked specifically at vaccines like the diphtheria tetanus pertussis vaccine, which is often blamed for SIDS, and found that vaccinated infants had a lower risk of SIDS compared to unvaccinated infants. And going back even further, a 2007 German study also showed that vaccinated infants had a lower risk of SIDS than those who were vaccinated. So why might vaccines actually reduce the risk of SIDS? 
One possible explanation is that vaccines help prevent serious infections that could otherwise contribute to unstable breathing patterns. For example, illnesses like pertussis, also known as whooping cough, can cause apnea in infants, which is when breathing temporarily stops. By preventing these kinds of severe infections, vaccines may help lower the risk of sudden infant death. This is why the American Academy of Pediatrics, the World Health Organization, and the CDC all support routine vaccination, not just because the benefits outweigh the risks, but because vaccines can save lives. So here's the bottom line. Vaccines do not cause SIDS. This myth exists because of timing and misinformation, not because of science. And the research is crystal clear. No studies have found a link between vaccines and SIDS. In fact, some studies suggest vaccines may actually lower the risk by preventing serious infections that could affect a baby's breathing. Now, if you're worried about SIDS, there are real steps that can help reduce the risk. I already mentioned a few of them already. Practicing safe sleep, avoiding secondhand smoke, keeping up with the regular pediatric checkups, and yes, vaccinating on routine. If you'd like to go deeper on this, check out my podcast episode with a board-certified ER doctor where we tackle SIDS. We talk all about safe sleep and what truly protects babies. And now I want to hear from you. What concerns have you had around vaccines or around SIDS? Drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And if this video helped clear things up, please give it a thumbs up sign, share it with a fellow parent, share it on social media, share it wherever you think people need reassurance. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. This is just the beginning of my vaccine series. I'll be covering vaccine ingredients, debunking myths about allergies and autism linked to vaccines, and walking you through the science behind each shot, step by step. Because my goal is simple, to help you feel confident in your child's health, development, and safety. Parenting comes with a flood of information. Some of it helpful, some of it very misleading. But I hope this gave you a little more clarity and peace of mind. Stay informed, stay empowered, and I'll see you all in the next one. Stay well.